Hey there, welcome to the She Talk Systems channel where we talk all things click up and systems and processes to help you run a much more efficient business inside of your business. So today I'm going to be bringing you behind the scenes and actually walking you through my very own click up workspace. I'm going to share with you how I use click up to run both my consultancy and also I have a coaching program as well that I currently use click up to help me operate. And the reason for this video is if you're anything like me, you are a little bit nosy and love to know what is going on inside of people's workspaces. If you are new here, my name is Nicola Melinda. I am a verified ClickUp consultant. And so I do this work with clients and help them to optimize their workspaces all day, every day. So if you are looking for ideas to revamp your workspace or you're actually getting started in ClickUp and you're not quite sure how the structure can work for your service-based business, then this video should hopefully give you some ideas and some good tips on what can really work inside of the platform. Now, like I said, this is inside of my own workspace. So a lot of what I do is adapted to my business. Everyone has their own process and own way of doing things. So even if you have a similar business model, you can definitely take away some tips and ideas to implement in your own workspace, but you might also find that you will adapt things that work better for yourself. And that's absolutely fine. One of the things that I love the most about working in ClickUp is that it is such a customizable platform. I personally have worked in lots of different project management tools and I've found that you always get to a point where you can't necessarily expand it or optimize it in a way that really works for you. ClickUp, on the other hand, gives you the functionality and the freedom to work in a way that works not just for you, but also for your team as well. And that's one of the biggest benefits that I've personally found inside of the platform. I have gone from being a solopreneur to running an agency to going back solo again. And now I have a very small micro team working with me, my consultancy. And ClickUp has adapted with me through all of the ebbs and flows of my business. So I really hope that you can enjoy the same experience that I personally have had as well. Now, one question that comes up a lot is what do I manage inside of ClickUp? And I will say it is my one source of truth in my consultancy, which means that I manage as much as possible. Now, it's not, even though it's marketed as a one-stop shop, it doesn't cover all of the ins and outs. So I do have other tools in my tech stack that support me with client contracts, invoicing, email marketing, and communication with clients. But there are some elements that do cross over into ClickUp as well. So for example, in this video, I'm gonna guide you through how I manage my client projects, how I structure my operation space, and also how I use marketing and use ClickUp for managing my quarterly planning as well. So I'm gonna show you the features that I use and how I've set those up in my own workspace, and also give you some insights into how I'm using it for my group coaching program as well, so that you can just see a little bit behind the scenes of what it's really capable of doing. So if you're ready, let's dive in. And if you are enjoying this video at any point, feel free to drop a like or hit subscribe. And so I can know to do more videos just like this so that you can enjoy them. Okay, so welcome inside of my ClickUp workspace. This is for my consultancy systems house, um, which is the bulk of my business. But as I said earlier, I do also have a coaching program that I run inside of ClickUp as well. So I'm gonna give you some insights into how I use ClickUp to help me manage that. But for the most part, I use ClickUp to run my setup services and work with clients on an ongoing basis. So I'm gonna walk you through my structure and I'm also gonna share with you how I work with clients, how I use ClickUp to work with clients. I'm gonna share with you how I use it to manage my marketing and my operations and some other little bits as well, which hopefully you will find um, just as helpful to implement into your own business if you are looking for ideas. So I have my spaces for the consultancy. So HQ is where we cover anything to do with operations, product development, and just internal um, management for the consultancy. And then SH team is anything to do with team hiring, managing team members, training, onboarding, um, and all of those things. They are handled under the team space. 
And then clients is where we handle client work as well. I actually will walk through a demo space for the client section um, because of confidentiality, obviously, but I will share with you how I still work with clients inside of ClickUp. So you'll see what that looks like. And then SH templates. Now this is how I store my templates inside of ClickUp. So I'll share with you how I manage templates and organize those as well. The other spaces that I have are not related to the consultancy. So I have one that is shareable templates. Now, some of you may be aware that I do sell a template bundle. So any templates that I'm selling, any templates that are um, available for me to share, they are all stored within this um, particular space. And so they are in folders, they're in lists, and um, so they're organized. So I can actually go here and grab any shareable templates and I also can make any updates and tweaks to templates if needed but what it means is that they are separate from the templates that I use inside of my consultancy. So if I do create something in my business or for a client's business, and I think this is a really great template that I can share, then I will duplicate that and I will save it under my shareable template space and again, no one can touch that except for me, but it means that the templates themselves, they will never be disrupted or changed in any way unless I change the actual template. Then I have a space for She Talk Systems. And so when I launched the YouTube channel um, and my Facebook community, I was managing a lot in this space. Um, there has been some tweaks in where I'm managing some of the marketing for She Talk Systems, but I still have some historic lists here at the moment. So Facebook trainings, um, She Talk Systems tasks that I need to do to manage it, manage the community, and also a resource hub. Another resource hub is inside of this space. And then um, the Systems Pro Academy, this is where I actually run my group coaching program. So in this space, I manage everything from launching to students to marketing, tracking and um, management and ongoing product development as well. So this is a space that is dedicated to my coaching program. And this is where I run all of that. So that's a quick whiz through of my workspace and how I've structured things. So let's dive in a little bit deeper into how I actually manage some specific areas of my business inside of ClickUp. So we'll start off with the operations. So inside of the HQ space, um, you might call this the operations or you might call it an internal space. I call it HQ headquarters. Um, I have various folders in place now. Um, as you can see, there are still padlocks on these folders. When you're working with contractors, team members, what you might find is that actually you still want them to have some sort of um, access around your workspace. And that's one of the things that I love about ClickUp is you can choose what type of sharing and permissions you provide your team with. Um, in my case, I have a contractor that works with me and she has access to the whole workspace except for the padlocked areas. And that works really well. So in this particular space, I have a folder for operations. So anything to do with the internal operations for the business. Um, so if we need to make website updates, if we need to um, change something in the inbox or just ongoing internal operations um, tasks, they will all sit within the agency operations list. And I find that it just makes it a lot easier for me to um, organize my tasks in the right places. So I use this list when it is anything internal. Then I have two additional lists in place, which are more um, resource lists. So the first is a platform access, and this is where I will store down passwords for platforms or access to um, tools that we use in the business. Now, we do use LastPass, which is very secure and very, very happy with that. It works well, but there are sometimes occasions where someone gets locked out of a platform and you need the password. So this is a really great way for me to um, make sure that it's been stored safely in ClickUp and then the team can access what they need to access as well. Then we also have a resource hub. So the resource hub is literally that. It's like a, a knowledge space. So I can store down assets for the business inside of this area. 
so this list will default to a board view and so if you're familiar with Kanban boards this is literally what it is so the statuses are the types or the sections of the assets and so we've got copy assets digital products trainings and um, services anything about the company brand assets all of that is stored here historically in the past i've had um, a va working with me and that person has needed access to um my bio or my brand assets my colors or they need to learn more about my services and things like that so it's a lot easier for me to put all of that information in one place and they can grab what they need and do the work that they need to do with it so I find that is really helpful for me actually as well. So another area that you'll see in this space is I have a folder called agency clients. Now this is where I will store my client list so any clients that work with me will actually be sat within the client list overall. And it's almost like a contact list, but I can track what services they're on, um, how they're working with us. And if there are team members assigned to that particular client, I can also um, see what team members and assign accordingly to that particular project um, or client um, account. So here we are inside of my agency processes. So this is a folder made up of multiple lists. And this is essentially where I store and create all of my SOPs inside of my consultancy. So you can see here that we've got some that were majority created last year or updated last year. Um, so this is the core list that I actually have. And if you do want a copy of this folder, it's inside of my ClickUp plug and play bundle, which is linked in the description. Um, so all of these lists, they all link to the core master list. Um, so I have SOPs for accounting, client management, um, operations, sales, marketing. So all of these are processes that need to be created, need to be written up. And you'll see that I also have some that have linked documents to them. So the custom fields will tell me who owns that process and um, what the status is, when it was last updated, um, has it been tested? And if there's an access link or linked document. So some of the SOPs are inside of Google Drive and some are actually inside of a ClickUp document. So inside of the ClickUp document is the core process handbook. So that is my main handbook of where I store the SOPs when I do create these inside of ClickUp. So if you're wondering how you can um, build out your SOPs and keep them inside of ClickUp, this is one solution that I um, use for myself and uh, other clients have implemented this in their business and it works really, really well. So the process handbook is a ClickUp document and um, we have the cover image um, first of all and then all of our various sub pages that link to um, the other SOPs or the other parts of the business. So as an example, we've got our client management SOPs and this is, as you can see, a sub document. So the pages are all stacked pages. And so it really fits quite neatly inside of the setup. And then if you were to click on one of the pages, it takes us into um, another SOP. So we've got some additional linked pages as well. And then you've got the SOP right there for um, the team to access. And so this is how we manage that inside of ClickUp. Um, we do have an SOP template. So this is a process template that can be duplicated. So all I will do is duplicate that um, page. I'll duplicate it and then place it wherever it needs to be placed. And then I can go ahead and create the SOPs for any other parts of the business that I need to focus on. And then inside of any of these lists, I can then link the document in ClickUp and link that back to the SOP that's created. So that task, these tasks will be connected to the actual SOP itself. So then I can see what documents are attached to the SOPs. So as an example, I can see now we have our linked documents for how to invite clients into Slack, how to do click up onboarding and how to manage projects. So we've got all of our documents attached and linked to the actual process. 
So next I have my agency um, operations planning folder. And this is where I will manage all of my strategic planning from an operational perspective. But it also actually does take into account the wider business as well. So it's made up of two lists and this is um, based off a trademark framework. So I have um, through a program, I'm certified director of operations. This is a based off of trademarked framework. So it's not mine to give away, but I have adapted this inside of ClickUp to work for my business. And so I've got my vision, mission and values in these tasks at the top. And then all of these strategic objectives that I will be focused on or I want to focus on are all housed here. So we've got anything from marketing to operations, client experience, team growth, finance, all of the things. Now, what I have created as um, a byproduct of that strategic planning board is my ops project list. So this is where I will essentially map out my projects for the year, um, but for each quarter, and I will set goals for each of those projects. So I have, um, this is a bit of a dashboard. So it's all of my quarterly projects. They're all broken down based on the quarter period. And so every um, main project is a task for that quarterly period. And I know what the business objective is. I've also got a project progress bar so I can see how I'm getting on. So right now, Right now I'm overdue for quite a few projects. So that gives you an idea as to how much is going on because nothing in here is client related. This is all internal related. It really helps me to keep an eye on where we're at and where we need to either make adjustments. Do we need to push something out? Have I been over ambitious? And um, it really helps me to just make those adaptations to the, to the priorities that we're trying to focus on. So, um, Let's pull out a project that we're working on. So um, for Q2, I have updates for my coaching program. So that's what we're currently working on for the month of May and working through those. And so as you can see, we have all of the updates that need to be put in place and then all of the subtasks that will need to be done throughout the month of May. Um, so that's the month, current month that we're in. Um, and so, what happens at the top here, I've got different views. So I have views for my Q2 tasks, Q1, Q3, Q4, all of my tasks. And then in this area, it's pulling out my subtasks as separate tasks. So I literally just focus on these tasks and I'm grouping it based on the due date itself. So I can come into these um, lists and I can see what do I need to be working on? We've got some tasks that are a little bit overdue. Um, and so these are the tasks that I might need to just revisit, say, do I need to work on these a little bit more? Um, I've got, I'm part of a group program. So that again, I'm trying to stay on track for that group program. And then all of my other future updates as well. And that is really how I'm managing internal priorities throughout the course of the year. Um, and what is really great is that you can see how much you're actually getting done as well. So if I look at my Q1 tasks, I'm able to see how much was done. So I'm using the done status to help me to keep a track. So it keeps the task open, but I'm just marking it down as done. And so I can see this is all what we were able to accomplish throughout the Q1 period of this year, which is quite good. So there's a lot going on in the background. So that's really how I manage the operations side of the consultancy inside of ClickUp. Um, let me know if you've got any questions on any of those things that I've shared or if you want me to expand a little bit more and I'll be happy to do that. So the big question is always how do I work with clients inside of ClickUp? So let's dive into that now. So I have created demo space, which is for clients. So I'm going to share with you exactly how I work with my clients in ClickUp. However, this is obviously not real information in here, just for confidentiality purposes. So basically in this space, you'll see that I have two folders. So I have a folder for ClickUp audit clients, and then I will use folders for client projects. So client projects will be people that we're um, setting up ClickUp or other platforms for. Um, and then we also have a list for ClickUp consulting clients. So if anyone books a call with us um, or with me just for a one-off consulting session, then their details will come into this particular list and we can have the call and I'll just keep their details here. So I've split my 
client management into almost like three different areas in this space. Um, so click up audits, anyone that books an audit with us, we'll just have, um, we'll create a list. And this is a list for internal purposes. It's not a list for external um, clients. So they won't be invited into this list. What the clients will receive is an improvement plan, which is a ClickUp doc that we create. And we will do an audit and then share any comments through this document. So this is a templated document that we will be able to share and we'll also link in a project plan that can be added to their own workspace so that the client can do the work themselves. So this is a templated document that is attached to the list and so we will um, prepare that document as we're conducting the audit for our clients. So all of these tasks are really just for our internal purposes and not for the clients to worry about or see. And if the client does go on to a larger project, then what we'll do is set up a folder and then we'll onboard them as a full service project client inside of the consultancy. Now for clients that are booking on for a larger project, we use a folder for these clients. And so there's a lot more inside of this. There's a lot more to organize um, and to manage on these projects. So we do have various lists and clients are invited into two of these lists inside of ClickUp with us. Um, so first of all, we have client management list, which is pretty much like our admin, onboarding, making sure we're getting them set up. So um, we're able to link in any um, link to their Google Drive, to their workflow map. We also link in their pre-work form, which is housed inside of Dubsado. So we add that to the project as well. Um, and any client calls, touch points, they are also in place as well. And offboarding um, tasks that we need to do. So all of that is housed inside of this area. And we've also got our setup SOP here as well, which is linked inside of this project. So anyone who is setting up this project in the team, they know exactly what needs to be done. And we've just got a little checkbox that just says, it's done or not. Um, so we don't necessarily close these tasks down. It's just more to know what needs to be done. Um, and the reason I've done it that way is because not all of the tasks need to be closed. Um, so project information, those will always stay open. Client touch points, we want to know um, that these stay open and their calls are taking place. So that's where we handle like the admin for the clients. Um, you might be wondering where we manage invoicing. All of the invoicing is handled in Dubsado. So I don't bring any client invoicing into ClickUp, not from that perspective. I don't track that on their projects. That is managed inside of Dubsado. Next, we've got our project plan. So the project plan is where the actual work will happen. So there's a lot more on the project plan board. Um, I've got more views. So again, I've still got um, additional views for the pre-work form and the Google Drive. That's just really to make sure that everything is just there and we can capture it uh, in whatever level we need to capture it at. Um, the team and the clients have access to the project plan. And um, the clients have access only to view the tasks inside of ClickUp. Now, some people might say, well, why not comment? Why not allow them to have full access to, to comment and edit? What I find works best is that we have the project plan in this area. We can set up the tasks and set up the project as needed. And our clients are able to communicate with us inside of Slack. So really they have a view of the project here. They also have a dashboard view, which I'll share with you as well. And we use that inside of ClickUp. And we invite our clients to view their project progress inside of um, the dashboard. Um, but this is really, again, for internal project management. This isn't for the clients to necessarily give um, feedback as such, because we will share those updates with them inside of Slack. We also have a strategy call document that is, again, templated down. So we'll have um, an area in place for us to manage um, the scope of the project. We'll work through the timelines of the project. And this will be adjusted on a case by case basis. So we have everything we need and we can just essentially get to work on this project. Now, clients have their own task list inside of ClickUp. So in this particular folder, we give in this particular list, we give clients um, access to a list. Some use it and some don't. And all that is is for them 
to make sure that they're doing the things they need to do before they start their project. So book their strategy call, access Slack, complete pre-work form, share down any assets. Um, so these are great reminders and um, we can always use this as well to sort of nudge our clients if they need to do anything. And this clients do have full access to. So if there are other tasks that they need to do, they might add those tasks here or we'll add them in for them. Um, so they can edit and comment and create tasks in this list. This is for the clients um, essentially. Then we have an area, a list for any completed assets. So we split off any assets that we have created and this doesn't always get used. It really is down to the client. Um, so we have test tasks here, let me clear that down. Not sure where that's come from. Um, so if we do create any videos, graphics, um, assets, uh, usually this is in a board view as well. So we'll set this up and ensure that clients have um, access to all of the assets that we create for their project. Um, so we'll set this as a default view here. And so this will be shared as well. So clients will have access to this. Um, so if there are any copy dots that we create, any SOPs um, that we create, we do put those straight into their ClickUp um, account as well, and any other assets that come up during the project. And then the next area is that we have a ClickUp user guide, which is for our clients. So this is a custom user guide that we um, have as a template. This is where we put in SOPs for our clients. And essentially, we will start with um, sharing content libraries and give them guidance on how to launch ClickUp, um, video tutorials on using ClickUp, um, how to manage it with their team, best practices, transferring data, all of those things. So this is a guide that we provide our clients with and it goes into their ClickUp space so they can put that to work for their business. So that's how we work with clients inside of the, um, the workspace. And we also do have a dashboard. So if you've seen my videos before, then no doubt you'll be familiar with the client portal dashboard that I use with my clients. And I still use it to this day. It's really helpful. It's really beneficial. Um, so this is the dashboard where we will link in any client tasks that our clients need to be um, closing down and working on. We'll also link in their project tasks as well. We'll also attach a link to their Google Drive folder. And I also have my um, call links um, embedded into this area. So this is from Dubsado, the client portal is from Dubsado. And then I'm pulling in areas from ClickUp as well. So this is a really great um, dashboard area for the clients to come and have access to their work, the progress of the project, um, any key information that we need to share with them. Um, and it just works really well for us. So I'm still using this format. And if you've seen my previous video, then no doubt you will, you know, you'll then you'll understand how this is all put together. So we don't send emails to our clients through ClickUp. We don't really have a need to do that with the way that we work. Um, but we find that communication with clients can sit quite well within Slack. Some people find that they it works well to bring clients into ClickUp and that is also OK. So it's just all about finding what works best for you in your business and bringing that process into your business so that it can work well for everybody involved. So we've looked at operations, we've looked at clients. Let's have a look at the marketing. So this is a new space that I have um, put together um, pretty much this year. So previously I used to manage all of my marketing under my HQ space in ClickUp. And now I have actually moved all of that out and I have a separate marketing space. So now I have marketing for She Talk Systems, which is the YouTube channel predominantly, and also my Facebook group. And then I have a marketing folder for Systems House, which is my consultancy. And then I have a folder to manage my metrics as well. And then marketing resources, my promo calendar, calendar, any PR and collabs that I'm doing as separate lists. So my She Taught Systems is where I handle all of my YouTube productions. So if I click here, you'll be able to see, you can see I've got ideas, I've got my production for YouTube, and also the videos that have already been published are also housed inside of this folder as well. So you'll probably see what um, videos are coming up for this month. And um, so you get a little sneak peek, to see what is coming up, but this is my workflow. 
So we've got our status, we've got what's in the production stage, so what's being recorded. When it is complete, then I'll add in the video link there and that works really well. I have a production calendar so I can see what videos, um, when they're going to be live. So my next videos will go out for this video is going to go out on the 17th of May and um, so you can see what videos are coming up and that helps me to really keep a track. I'm also testing some content on this channel for um, uh, sharing more information on how to become a systems pro. So these are separated in a list view so that's what I'm doing and um, so you'll see that there will be some new videos coming up um, soon on um, how to become and how to specialize in systems and so I'm also running these uh, or managing these videos inside of my production workflow but each of my video tasks have subtasks and then there are checklist items attached to it as well so i can see what i need to do so writing the show notes recording the video editing preparing seo the graphics scheduling and then putting it to my um blog post on my website this is based off a template task so there's a few automations that i have in place so when um, a task is created in this particular list it will apply the template for me and so all of those subtasks all of the checklists will be put in place and i can essentially just get to work on that video um so we're a little bit behind schedule on the consulting videos um but for the click up videos i have another area and those are i pretty much go through the same process as well so I've got my published date there and I have all of the subtasks for each of the videos. So I'll just close down the subtasks as I'm working on the video. So if you see one video as a project, um, then you've got all of the subtasks to complete that project or that video. Then once the video is actually scheduled and published, I actually have a list which is a blog post list. So I move that video to be scheduled on my website and my um, team will come in um, and they will essentially put that up on the website for me. So um, we've got one task at the moment that needs to be put onto Squarespace. So I'll do the transcription, we'll get that put onto the website. And this is the templated task that I use um, to make sure that the video is put onto the website blog um, correctly. So I'm managing all of that um, inside of these folders. Then my um, consultancy is a little bit bigger. So my consultancy folder is a bit different. Um, if I click on the folder level, that's mainly where I live. I live at the folder level inside of this space um, because I have my full editorial calendar. So all of these lists, for planning reels or shorts, emails and um, posts that might go on my LinkedIn or my Instagram, stories and um, threads, if you hang out on threads these days, lives. Um, so all of these lists actually feed into my editorial calendar. So when I click on the folder, my default view is the calendar and I can see what content is scheduled to go out. So this is what I've got scheduled for the rest of the month of May um, and I can work on that content. So my pillar content is my YouTube and then everything else is based off of that YouTube video but if I go into these lists they are adapted a little bit differently I don't use them as heavily as I used to um, purely because I have pulled back quite a bit on my Instagram marketing um, so my reels planner list is quite built out so I've got a lot of content ideas in here um, that could be scheduled to go. So I've got the video type. These are all custom fields that I'm using. I've got the type of video that I want it to be, whether it's a, a head talking, me talking, or B-roll, or a screen share, or voiceover. Um, the type of content, so if it's inspirational, or I want to sell. Um, and then my content pillars. So it's a little bit outdated um, it does need a little bit of work in here but if I've got reels audios that I want to add in here or come cover image then I will add that so all of these tasks are the actual content pieces and then I will use the custom fields to just say what that content piece and how it should be created I do a similar thing inside of my post planner as well. So my post planner, I will write out the hook as the title of the task. Um, I've got the content type, so whether it's a Facebook post or um, a social media post. Um, because I have um, 
posts that can go out across different platforms and I also have my marketing platform so I could say for example that this post is going to go onto my Instagram, my Facebook and also my LinkedIn as an example. So again I'm using the custom fields and these are labels, these are custom field labels to just help me say where that piece of content is going to be um, placed on that particular published date. So that's how I'm managing the marketing inside of the business. My metrics, um, so I've got an overall metrics tracker that covers everything inside of um, tracking the metrics and hand on heart, I'm not the best at doing this and I do need to get better. Um, so the statuses are all months and these are all months of the year. So I will just renew this for every year. And then we're using custom fields, just a numerical custom field, um, and it will help me to just track all of the um, the numbers, the metrics that I actually want to keep a track of over the course of time. So this is really helping me. It's a little bit outdated, this one, but you can get an idea as to how I structure that inside of ClickUp. It's not necessarily a spreadsheet inside of ClickUp, so that's just something to bear in mind. This is the list view, but if you like a different view, perhaps the, the table view might be a view that you could put to work for yourself if that's preferred. Um, and in this particular area, you could just say we're not going to group it based on any particular status um, and then you would just add in all of the custom fields uh, again and you would be able to see the numbers as a table format in this example. So then I've got an area for marketing resources. So again, just a, a resource hub um, so I can store in my templates, my Instagram templates, my podcast pitch um bio headshots, SOPs for setting up emails, all of those type of things. So that's always stored there. Um, and then I have my promo calendar as well. So this is something that I created for this year because I have my consultancy and I also have my um, coaching program. It actually made sense for me to create some sort of a promo calendar. So I don't necessarily close these tasks down as such, um, but it does help me to map out a timeline. So you the timeline view and the calendar view to help me to see and adjust my launches in the business so then I can see what should I be focused on so right now I'm only really focusing on selling my setups and um, my project setups but later on in the year I will be launching my group coaching program again so I'll be um, using that calendar to help me just manage my um, launches for the business. So this is really helpful. Um, if you have multiple things that you sell and you're trying to just get a good timeline, um, this might be an idea for you to implement inside of ClickUp. And then tracking of PR and collaboration. So but for anyone that I do want to collab in this particular area, I will add in who that person is um, and I'm using the custom fields to help me to track and manage that. Um, so if it's podcasts, if it's live speaking, if it's a masterclass, I will have down all of the names. So some of this information might be blurred out purely because it's um, uh, some of it is just not information I really want to put out on YouTube. However, um, it gives you an idea as to um, how that can work. And I do have a workflow in place. So I've got a board for you that I use to, again, help me to see who's been pitched, um, who's left to be pitched, quite a few, and um, where I'm waiting on a response and what's been booked as well. So it just helps me to keep a track of the pitches that I'm putting out there for more visibility in the business. So the next area that I wanted to share with you actually is how I manage templates inside of ClickUp. So, um, I actually have a templated space inside of ClickUp and this is everything in to do with my business that I use for my business. Um, so you'll see that I have color coded folders. Anything in purple is what has been purchased. So they're not my templates, but they have been purchased. And then yellow are all of the things that I have created for my own business. So all of these templates are for the consultancy. Um, so I have my ClickUp setup folder for my clients. Um, a planning intensive folder, um, anything for VIP days, if I do a VIP day offer, 
So the folders are obviously just standalone folders. And then I have a folder where I store any list templates. So any um, list templates that I have, so team member onboarding, that's a one that I would use for anyone that's coming to work with me as a new team member. And then they'll have access to this list and we'll put all of that in place for them. Um, and so these are all templated lists um, that are just inside of this folder. So I store them all in one place to keep it organized. And then I have a list which is for my templated tasks. So I've created it in a way so it stands out a little bit more. Um, but this is all of my task templates that I use within my consultancy. And I store them down within this list area as well. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you are sort of confused as to how you can document your templates, this is what I do in ClickUp to keep it organized and how it can work. So the next thing I do want to share is how I run my group program inside of ClickUp. So if you have um, a coaching program that you are running inside of your business, then this is how you could use ClickUp to help you manage that. So I have all of my folders um, which split into various areas. So I'm using one space and then I'm using various folders. So I have a folder that manages my launch, a folder for my students, marketing, tracking, and then any like management program management, and then product development as well. And I also have a document which is for everything to do with the coaching program. So for those of you who might be just starting out, this is a good example where you don't have to do too much in ClickUp. Um, you know, some people might have a whole ClickUp workspace for something like this. But for me, this is a very new program. So I'm quite happy to keep it inside of my consultancy um, click up and then I can look to move it out if we look to move it out at a later date. But essentially, I'm managing all of the areas of my program here. So for the launch, I have my launch calendar, which you can see already popping up. So I'm managing the dates for when I'm going to be visible, when I'm going to be promoting my masterclass. So if any of this needs to be adjusted, then I absolutely can go in there and adjust these dates. And again, I've got calendar view um, right here and I've got a timeline view that I'm using inside of ClickUp to help me manage that. I've got any launch tasks that I need to do and also my launch goals as well. So as you know, goal tracking is important. And then for students, I have a different list. So everything that is student related is inside of this folder. So any applications, I'm not using applications at the moment, but if I want to, I do have an application um, form and a list that I can use for this particular process. So this isn't currently active. Um, student assignments, so my students can submit work to me and I can again have a look at that work and in this particular area I do have a workflow in place so when students submit their work they receive an email automation straight away which is all set up inside of ClickUp so students can submit their, their work using this form below. And then inside of the list, I actually have a couple of automations. So once the form is submitted, then the students will receive an email from me. So basically, I will send an email to the student to say um, that their work has been received. So I'll just say your work has been submitted um, and I'll recap what they have shared. So I'm using the custom fields from the form and adding those back into this email here. So I'm letting them know this is the assignment you submitted, this is the link to your work, and if there are any additional comments, this is what they've shared. And so this actually sends from um, our group program um, email address. And then we have a second email that sends out after I've reviewed the work. And this is all based on the status changing. So I will put that task into, um, reviewing so we've got a new form submission it will go into reviewing and then once it's been reviewed and i mark it as reviewed then it will send another email to the student to say the feedback is ready and it will personalize that email send them the link to the feedback and any comments that i add in so these are also custom fields and again they will get that email and students can get that personalization while I get to manage this inside of ClickUp in the back end. And it's just so, so helpful. So that's what I do with student assignments. Um, active students are for those who are on board. So I have an intake form 
So here I have an intake form where students can um, fill this out and submit this. So this will sit within ClickUp and I'll have a view as to what their goals are. I'll learn a little bit more about them. I've got some information from them um, about their business and I'll be able to have that information here. So again, when students submit this, then there are some automations in place um, after they've submitted this form and it all stores inside. So all of the active students are here. If they do fill out this form, this isn't tracked, so it's not mandatory. It's ideal if they do fill it out, but it's not mandatory. And then we do weekly Q&A. So again, I'm using the ClickUp form for students to submit questions. And again, it sits within this list. So any questions that are submitted, then I can um, review them and I can respond back to them. And it goes back into ClickUp. Any past students, they are sat in this list. So anyone that goes through the program and they finish the program, then they'll go into the past students list. And I also have a feedback form as well that I share with my students. Um, and so this is just a really great way to manage your students, manage the program. I've also got support tickets. So if there's queries about billing, um, just admin queries, they lose access to the student portal, then we can um, address those concerns inside of the support ticket section. Next, I've got my marketing. So again, marketing for my coaching program is separate to marketing for my consultancy and for YouTube. So I keep that in a separate space. I did move this to my marketing space and then just felt that Actually, I preferred it just keeping the coaching and the consulting separate. So now it's back within the um, coaching space. And again, it's a pretty similar layout to my consulting marketing folder. I've got a list for my reels, for my emails, posts, stories and lives. And all of that content is planned um, inside of this area. And then I can use the folder view which again defaults to my content calendar. So we don't have any content planned at the moment, but once we start planning that content out, then I'll be able to see all of that in my calendar. So we can now see all of the content that is planned and mapped out for the next few weeks. And so that is there in place in this area. Next, we've got tracking. So here is where I can track my um, any collabs that I want to do, any analytics for the coaching um, program and um, outreach as well. So if you are doing outreach, if you are doing engagement, market research, um, I created an outreach um, tracker to help me stay on top of that. So I've got various views for prospects, market research, collabs, um, and it just really helps me to stay on top of the people that I'm speaking to. So again here, this information we blurred out, but you can see the status to see whether they're interested, whether they're engaging, um, am I nurturing them, are we just having conversations, have I actively pitched, um, and any notes that are in place if I've got um, contact details and also just the marketing platform where I found them as well, where we connected essentially. So all of that is inside of my outreach tracker. And then I do have a metrics tracker for marketing and sales as well inside of um, this area. So I'm tracking quite a little bit in for the program as well. So this is really helping me to manage the business program, the business side of the program. And then I've got in management, I've got operational tasks and just program management tasks. So anything that does need to be done in terms of operating the group program. So uploading calls to the portal and um, setting up um, Google Drive. We've recently created a new email and calendar. So we've got to set all of these things up. Um, SOPs need to be created. So there's a few things here that need to be um, put together. And then program management is just the date, the day to day management. So group check ins, making sure workshops are scheduled out, making sure that um, we're preparing for workshops and reviewing any submissions, work questions that are submitted by the students. This is where um, just the program management comes into place as well. And then product delivery is for me to work on any um, projects behind the scenes that are to do with the coaching um, side of the business. So any new um, courses or workshops or trainings that I want to do, they will all sit within product development as well. Guys, I hope you had as much fun watching that as I did filming this video and walking you through all of the different areas of how I'm using ClickUp in my business. 
honestly there are so many different ways that you can set this up for yourself if you are feeling a little bit lost a little bit confused on where to start then definitely check out my services page i'll link that below i have a few options of how you can work with me as your consultant and i would love to help you to get on that side of working more efficiently feeling really confident with using ClickUp, and you can actually just grow and bring on and manage your team with much more ease thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time